trying to sum up in just a few seconds how Parkinson's has affected Dean's life, my life and indeed our lives is next to impossible. But I'll have a go. The progression of Parkinson's has meant that Dean has had to give up his career. He was an incredibly well respected psychotherapist. The loss of his professional identity hit him like a train. The physical side of Parkinson's presents his own unique set of challenges every day. It's a pick and mix disease. You're never quite sure what to expect when you wake up. Flexibility is the key. We've had to change plans at the last minute or cancel planned events because of the myriad of symptoms. We are fortunate, however, that we have very supportive friends. Understanding and accepting that Dean is unable to get out of bed because he's in so much pain or the impact it's had on our social life, our financial well-being and the general plan we had for life is challenging. But if given the choice, I'd still choose him. Parkinson's can take so much, but it hasn't taken who he is or what we are. So here in the guest room in our cottage, um, this is where I spend much of my time, particularly while we're in lockdown. I had to give up work in 2019. I received a letter from the NHS stating that because of the Brexit vote, potentially supply chains might be disrupted and therefore my medication couldn't be guaranteed to me. Um, and as a psychotherapist, I made the decision, which was very difficult, to not take on any new client. But also because my symptoms were worsening anyway, it it was like the universe conspired and made that the time that I had to retire. I'm not going to say a massive about, amount about my meds, but effectively there's a lot. I have to take meds every one and a half hours. And if I don't, then my body will stop working. I will slow down. I will develop twitches and shakes and spasms. I will have difficulty with speech and movement and balance and cognitive functioning. Practicing art has become something which has been very therapeutic, but I understand Parkinson's also has an effect on the brain which makes us more creative. In our guest room here, I've created a little art studio. So it's just a, an old table in the corner of the room, but um, I, here's one of the canvases, some of the art I've created. I also signed up to a karaoke site and sing because singing, which I learned from a speech therapist, is very good for people with Parkinson's whose voice is affected. And I would recommend it to anybody as a means of coping. Um, I also have a writing desk. So I, um, just behind me, when I studied for a diploma in creative writing, um, I thought, well, I'm not going to sit around and, and just do nothing. I'm going to keep learning. So I did that and then wrote a book of poetry to talk about my experience of having Parkinson's. And again, a therapeutic process, but one that I wanted to do creatively and something I wanted to be able to gift to people out there who also have Parkinson's to be able to access. So I just conducted an exercise of, over the last several months, doing a review of our cottage, going around looking at each room and thinking, you know, what do I struggle with? What causes me difficulty? What makes me feel stressed? Because sometimes it's hard to find things. Sometimes things pile up because there's no way to put something. Sometimes I might have difficulty moving around because there's just too many things on the floor space. And I looked at each room and I thought, what causes me stress in that room and what can I do about it? So um, in the process of that, I've done quite a number of things and I'll show you. So there is a medicine cabinet, somewhere to store my medication so that it's not in our kitchen cupboards and bathroom cupboards. And this little walk-in closet, bought some new furniture so that I could just to store my clothes more easily. In the bedroom we had wash bins which were two or three sort of canvas sacks which were maybe about four foot high but they weren't stable so they would tip over sometime and I found recently 
um, an alternative. So that's a four compartment wash bin, which basically enables me to move it just by wheeling it. It's a frame with four bags built into it. So you can sort your washing into four sections, but I can just move that so easily. It's on wheels. Um, and I don't have any difficulty then in having to try to bend and pick things up or lug the bags around. We live in a very sort of wonky house, it's hundreds of years old, so there's no straight floor. But we haven't been able to have tables beside the bed, and I needed that because I need somewhere to put my medication and to have some water. So my solution, most recently, was to put in CD racks. You can see that just by the bed, I've got medication, water, um, and that's great. Nice and easy to access. Just need to repaint around that now. Shoes. Shoes on the floor can be a real hazard. Not all shoes are, are upstairs, very few, but um, so I put a shoe rack on the bedroom floor just to get things up off the floor so they're in a space. We had a cupboard in our hallway which had a door on it. Um, and it was just a place where we used to just chuck things in. But that was difficult because whenever I wanted to get to something, I always had to pull out tons of boxes and materials. And it, it was stressful. I just wanted no stress. So I'll show you what I did. This was the cupboard, but I've taken the door off and turned it into a brick room. So down here we have the shoe rack and a chair and a shoe horn hanging from it our coats, put in a cupboard. So the whole aim here is to look at how do you make things work for you rather than for uh, rather than against you. I'll just show you our walk-in shower. If we had a bath I would fall over constantly falling in and out of the bath, sorry getting in and out of the bath. So the landlords put in very kindly a walk-in shower to minimize my risk. So the occupational therapy team kindly installed these rails to help me walk from the front door down to the driveway. They very kindly installed handrails indoors, so we have these just by the front door. And handrails going up the stairs. And my sunglasses. It might seem odd, but um, I suffer with migraine as a massive part of the experience of Parkinson's for me and even more recently been diagnosed with ocular migraine. So there's a little glimpse into how I cope with Parkinson's um, in general. Excuse me, my voice is going now because the um, speech I've been speaking a bit too long. Thanks Dino. I can relate to much of what you have shown us and now it's time for me to show the viewers what it's like for me to cope with young onset Parkinson's disease here in Lincolnshire. So one of the things I really dislike doing is putting my meds in my pill box. Um, in fact until recently I was just storing it like this. <laughs> so the reason why I hate it is because I see the amount of medication I'm on. It's, it's depressing seeing what I'm taking and um, that's why I hate doing it. And that is just part of living with Parkinson's. Fortunately two weeks ago I had a injury, a hamstring injury, which has resulted that I can't go on the treadmill. I've got my blanket hoodie on because it's bloody cold. Exercise has helped me with my balance. Exercise has helped me with my coordination and just generally, well, until recently, I just feel so much better after exercise. So I'm just waiting for the neurologist to ring me. Uh, I don't know which neurologist is phoning me. Last time it was actually a Parkinson's nurse. In fact, I only see my neurologist once in uh, almost five years and they had no Parkinson's nurse and that almost 18 months I had no one take care of me. So um, I had my first appointment last May 
with the neurologist, which was incredible. I actually spoke to a neurologist um, and he changed my medication and it was incredible, the difference in me. Then in September, I had the Parkinson's nursing me and today I'm waiting for, I'm not sure if it's, it says it's a neurologist, but we'll see if it's a neurologist or a Parkinson's nurse. I, it was the Parkinson's nurse that rang me. Um, I had a conversation with her um, and I explained to her that my tablets was wearing off sooner. So she's increasing my cinnamon, the morning um, dose at the, for the start and see how I get on. And then she says, if I feel like I can move up for the lunchtime and evening um, and see how I get on. So it's half past seven um, in the evening. Um, I'm pretty shattered. I probably look shattered, but I am tired. I'm always tired at this time of night. Um, I actually go and lay down about six o'clock every night because I am just so exhausted from the uh, day of activities of looking after the children. Um, not so much exercise at the moment because I'm unable to do that. I've been in an awful lot of pain today. So I think that's it for me today. I'm just absolutely exhausted. My sons are both awake, so I will go and settle them down and I will see how I feel tomorrow morning. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna be a bit better with my leg. We don't, we don't get to see mum at all worse very often do we because the thing is with mum is that she's well she's a tough cookie isn't she she yeah. always does everything on her own she's always so adamant that she has to do something so she doesn't like to show that she's struggling so it's hard for us to see when she is and when she isn't yeah but she does have a bad day so she wants to be the big strong mum for you but i do it, you, you have to pay really close attention to see when mum is struggling but the thing is, even when you know mum is struggling with something and you ask, do you want any help? She's like, no, I can do it on my own. She's always so... Independent. Yeah, independent. She always, she likes doing things on her own. And even though I know mum's gonna say, no, I'm fine. I always offer just in case she does say, yes, could you just do this for me? And I'm always more than happy to do it. And I sometimes do things for mum without actually asking her if she wants me to do just, it. You just want to interfere and help her, but <laughs> it's not always the best thing to do. She likes being independent. Um, today, I've had another bad day with my pain in my leg. Um, it's getting me down. It's hard enough not being able to move because of your Parkinson's, but having that extra um, injury is just um, and that's my life really is I'm in the mornings I'm stiff I'm slow and I, I have dystonia as well um, and then I usually take my meds and for a few hours I, I feel like I've got my body back again and obviously you have your bad days like my um, leg drag still i'm just really really slow and i don't know why i don't know why some days you just really wake up and you just know it's going to be a bad day and then other days you wake up and after you med you feel amazing and you feel like you could run a marathon well perhaps not a marathon but um so there you go that's a little bit into my life with parkinson's ordinarily i am a independent woman that wants to carry on taking care of her children her young children as long as i can and the way i feel that i'm able to do that is through exercise and eating healthily and battling on i can't think about next year next month i think about tomorrow and thinking of just tomorrow has got me this far um, if I look any further, then it worries me and there's no point me looking ahead that far. You're just going to take one day at a time.